About two years ago, my partner who I'm currently with um, actually brought it to my attention that I had an issue. And um, there was a lot of uh, resentment and anger at first. In fact, uh, we almost broke up because of him bringing it to light. Um, we were just six months into our relationship and he um, very lovingly came up to me and told me that he uh, saw a lot of patterns and uh, we have an age difference. Um, I'm 30, um, he's now 23 so if you can imagine um, he was in college at the time and, and how could this college kid be so aware and sensitive uh, and, and, and know that, you know, how dare he know or tell me that I was struggling. Um, it started out with alcoholism. Um, the first time I um, so now we'll go a little back in time. Uh, there's a traumatic event that did happen in my life. A lot of times addiction is, um, there's a, it's very cause and effect and there's reasons, even subconscious reasons. Um, we sometimes don't, aren't aware of that we're using uh, substance, uh, substances, uh, vices, uh, drugs, alcohol as a way to cope with these addictions or to um, coat uh, our pain. When I was 13 years old, I was actually raped. Um, I met a man at a mall, it was actually Black Friday, um, and I uh, was escorted to a, um, a public bathroom. Um, I was I was very a uh, independent child, and he, um, he befriended me, and we started out with a simple conversation, and um, invited me to have ice cream at the espresso bar, and I would say he was the, by then, the coolest adult that I've ever met. Um, I struggled with building relationships with adults. Um, I, growing up in a very conservative environment, I grew up in rural Idaho. Um, I was Mormon. I was gay. Um, so already there was a sense of insecurity, and I didn't have a lot of allies or any allies and a, a support network of people to reach out to. And this man befriended me. And um, traumatic experience, um, barely actually started coping with it and actually telling my story of this um, just in the past uh, year. Um, I'm uh, currently um, telling my story through a live performance that I'm touring across the United States. It's titled Secrets of a Gay Mormon Felon. And, uh, through this process of uh, coming to terms with my addiction, um, it's going back in time and finding uh, different uh, monument, different events in my life that have led me to where I am today. And one of this is this uh, very traumatic experience of this rape, and not realizing that not long after that, um, to cope with this pain, and I um, I started drinking and using alcohol. The first time was at a Boy Scout camping trip, actually. Um, ironically, it's a really conservative youth-oriented organization where uh, my parents had full faith that, um, you know, this would be an environment that would uh, yeah, keep me safe, and it's actually, it was my place for hedonistic exploration in a lot of ways. Um, and that was the first time that I actually uh, drink alcohol um, and then not long after that uh, started with uh, experimenting with other drugs. Um, definitely um, became a, um, a master uh, expert at living a double life. Um, I actually had this facade of being this uh, straight-laced, white, Mormon, great grades and fantastic school grades, and, but then on the other side I was struggling with my sexual orientation, the trauma from this rape, and then I was using drugs and alcohol, alcohol as, a cope, as a coping mechanism and no one knew. Um, I would uh, get alcohol any way possible. I would, um, as a kid in junior high, I would find those few friends that uh, their parents drank and I would pay them off. Uh, I would trade school lunch tickets uh, for their alcohol. I became uh, really desperate and then would bring the alcohol to school. I'd keep it in my locker. Um, and uh, there were many times in my uh, teenage years I would be, um, I would 
be drunk during school, and no one had any idea.